thank you for choosing LiftMaster. This video will give you the keys to successfully set up and connect a CapXS Smart Video Intercom S and MyQ community. We'll break the process down into three parts, site surveying and preparation, community and facility database setup, and pre-configuring, then installing the CapXS. This video is intended for demonstration purposes only. It is recommended that the procedures demonstrated be performed by trained professional installers and service technicians. Safe operation and servicing requires that you follow all instructions and safety advisories found in the supplied instruction sheet. To locate a trained professional installer or service technician, go to liftmaster.com slash locate a dealer. Let's dive in. Your mission starts with gathering the information you'll need to create the database. Determine who on site will function as your IT and network contact and discuss the device and its requirements with them. This can save effort later by ensuring that the network is prepared for the device to be installed and you know who can assist if you encounter any connectivity issues. For best performance, the superior quality video of the CAP-XS requires a robust internet connection with ample bandwidth. For each installed CAP-XS, LiftMaster recommends a download speed of 5 megabits per second and an upload speed of 5 megabits per second. There are other network considerations and we'll cover those later in the video. Wi-Fi and high-speed wired internet are both acceptable methods for connecting the CAP-XS to the internet. Upgrading a phone line to DSL is an acceptable type of high-speed wired internet. Use of external cellular service, such as one that would provide a cellular modem for data, is not recommended for video applications due to data usage. For installations using static IP, note the following details. IP address, net mask, gateway, primary DNS, secondary DNS, and tertiary DNS. For Wi-Fi installations, make note of the network name and password. Network proximity is another consideration. For Ethernet connections, the CAP-XS location must be within 300 feet of the network switch or router. For Wi-Fi connections, the signal strength must be sufficiently strong. Wi-Fi extenders should be avoided because they introduce latency and can negatively affect video quality. Make sure AC power is available and meets these requirements. There needs to be a 120 volt AC outlet wired to a dedicated minimum 10 amp circuit. This is your opportunity to identify the devices that the CAP-XS will be controlling. If a weakened credential reader or remote control devices are to be used with the CAP-XS, make sure they are compatible. After concluding the site survey and prior to arrival for installation, Work with the property owner to make sure all required wiring is routed. The next part of your mission is to get logged in so you can set up the property database. Open a browser and head to account.myq.com. You'll need to do a few things. They include adding the community as a facility, which includes setting up the subscription, adding the property manager as the facility manager or owner, adding the residents and other people who will have access to the facility, adding credentials such as card readers and remote controls and assigning them to the people, and finally, adding yourself to the facility along with your contact information. This will allow you to test that everything is set up properly after you install the CAP-XS. Let's get familiar with some of the most important screens. Click the plus sign button or click on the Facilities tab and then click Add New Facility. Both options will allow you to start the facility creation process. On the next screen, select Multi-Tenant Property. Enter the property name. Fill in the property address and time zone. Please note that this should be as close as possible for the site where the CAP-XS will be installed.
select the desired directory code length. Four-digit directory codes should satisfy the directory capacity for most CAPXS sites. Enter the details for the property manager. Click Next. Once the facility is created, a red subscription creation reminder pop-up will be displayed on MyQ. Clicking on the Add Subscription button will take you to the billing page where the MyQ Community Plan can be selected. Select the payment method. For this demonstration, we'll choose Credit Card. Now, let's add People, starting with the Property Manager. On the menu sidebar, click People. Click Add Person. Fill in the required fields. Choose the role of Facility Manager or Facility Owner. A facility owner has the control to edit all database information related to the facility, including billing. A facility manager can edit almost everything except for the facility itself, the permissions for roles, and they can't view billing information. Enter the email address. Select Send Invite. The property manager will get an email with instructions on what they need to do next. Fill in the address, the information that should appear in the directory for the individual, and assign credentials. Be sure to add the individual to an access group. There are three default groups. Resident, Staff, and Vendor. Click Save. Add the rest of the people to the database. Assign a role only to users who will be logging in to MyQ community. Those roles are residents, people who live in the community and who will be using guest management and the MyQ community app, and access managers, security personnel or community administrators who need to update user information in the database. Other users who don't require MyQ community, such as landscapers or maintenance people and vendors, do not need to have a role assigned. If the site is using external credentials, these can be added in MyQ by clicking on the Credentials tab. Then click on Add Credentials. Select the credential type. A credential is a barcode, card, long-range RFID tag or transmitter that is used to gain access to the community. Select the format being used by the community. To add multiple credentials at one time, select Bulk Load. Then enter the first and last credential numbers. You can also enter a single credential if you leave bulk load unchecked. Enter the facility code. Click Save. Lastly, update your own profile in the facility. You'll need to add credentials so you can test the function of the card reader and PIN code. You'll complete the rest of the database setup when you open the CAPXS. We recommend pre-configuring the CAPXS at your workshop or office prior to installing it at the job site. This allows you to confirm ability to connect to the internet, connection to the facility database, and basic functionality of placing a call, entering a code, and testing credentials if using external card readers or receivers. Here's what you'll need at your workshop to pre-configure the CAPXS an Ethernet or Wi-Fi network connection, a computer with Internet access, a MyQ community account with your dealer owner or dealer technician login credentials, 
Let's talk about what comes in the box. The system includes the CAPXS access control panel, a power supply, and the manual. Unpack the CAPXS and set it up on a protected surface such as the packing material. Locate the power supply that came with your unit. Using a standard Phillips head screwdriver, loosen both positive and negative connectors on the power supply. Attach the red wire to the positive connector and the black to the negative connector and tighten. The control board for the CAPXS can be seen from the back access panel. Locate the power input terminal. Notice the markings showing plus and minus and observe the orientation of the terminal block. You need to make sure you connect wires for the correct polarity. Press down on the orange press in tab to open the terminal to accept wires. Insert the red wire into the terminal block hole that aligns with the plus terminal on the board. Insert the black wire into the other hole. Once the wires are in place, make sure the red wire aligns to the plus terminal and the black wire aligns to the minus terminal. To wire a Wiegand reader or receiver, locate the Wiegand section of the accessory wiring terminal block. Locate the Wiegand input and observe the markings for data, power, and ground. Wires from the reader align to the terminals as follows. Green wire to data zero, white wire to data one, red wire to power, and black wire to ground. This is the minimum wiring configuration. Follow the wiring directions for your reader or receiver. Push down on the tabs to insert the wires in the proper holes. Then release the tab to secure the wires. Insulate any unused wires. Plug the power supply into a 120 volt AC outlet. Use only the power supply provided with the CAPXS. The CAPXS will display the MyQ logo and other code while booting up. When the boot up is complete, you'll see a welcome message. For this demonstration, we'll be connecting to a wired network. Locate the LAN port on the control board. Locate the LEDs on the Ethernet port on the control board. Connect the Ethernet cable from a hub, switch, or router to the LAN port on the control board. When a connection to an active network device is established, the green LEDs on the Ethernet port will light up or flicker. If the green LED is not lit, first check that the router is powered up. Also, check the connections on the CAPXS and the router. To enter the admin mode, tap the three vertical dots in the upper right corner of the welcome screen. The CP number for the CAPXS should be shown on the initial admin mode screen, but it is on a label on the upper part of the chassis as well. In the system menu, tap on the network button to be taken to the network setup screen. On the display, select Network Settings, then tap Change Network Settings. Select Wired Network, tap Continue, and tap Connect. The screen will update to show network connection status information. To confirm the camera is functioning correctly, in the system menu, select Audio Video. The live stream from the camera will be displayed in the Camera Settings window. Log in to MyQ Community Control. By now, you've already set up the community database by adding residents, credentials, and more. When you add the CAPXS to the facility, the database will be downloaded. This can take up to five minutes, depending on the speed of the internet connection. At this time, the phone.com subscription can be set up for the CAPXS to permit testing of the call functionality. Download is complete when the directory button turns blue. Confirm the clock, welcome message, and background image are displaying the correct information. Tap the directory, then find a name buttons and search for your own name. Call yourself. Answer your phone. Confirm the microphone and speaker audio are working. Press Grant Access. Also test credentials. Swipe or tap a card to the card reader. The light will turn green and you will hear a beep.
Now that you've successfully pre-configured the CAPXS, it's time to repack it for transportation to the job site. Disconnect power to the CAPXS. Disconnect the wires from the Wiegand and power input wires and the Ethernet cable if used. Repack the CAPXS in the original packing material. Be sure to box up all the items that came with the product. As you learned during the site survey and preparation, the CAPXS installation can require a variety of wires, including power, relay connections, internet, and accessory cables. When you arrive at the job site, make sure these wires are available and ready for connection. The CAPXS needs to be securely mounted to a flat surface. Secure the mounting bracket to the surface of choice. Position the unit for mounting, pulling the wiring through the mounting gasket and bracket, and then through the available holes. Secure the cap access to the surface using the appropriate hardware for your application. Stainless steel hardware is recommended. Use of zinc-plated or galvanized hardware is not recommended because of the risk for rusting. During your site survey, you confirmed availability of a dedicated 120-volt AC outlet rated for 10 amps. Identify the power wiring leading from the CAPXS mounting location. Connect to the stripped DC output wires on the power supply. Connect the black wire on the power supply to the negative wire from the CAPXS and the red wire on the power supply to the positive wire from the CAPXS. Consult the manual for allowable wire run distances and recommended wire gauge. Plug the power supply into the dedicated outlet after all connections have been made. Let's get the network connection set up. Enter admin mode by tapping the three vertical dots in the upper right-hand corner of the welcome screen. Tap the system drop-down and select Network. Tap Network Settings, then Change Network Settings. You'll be prompted to select the network type. There are three options. Wi-Fi Network, Wired Network, which configures automatically, manual setup of a wired connection. If you're connecting to a Wi-Fi network, choose Wi-Fi and tap Continue. You'll get a list of available networks. Select the network name. Enter the Wi-Fi password. Tap Connect. Connecting to the network may take a few moments. The network status will show Connected. Tap Continue to Admin Mode. For wired Ethernet connections, loop the Ethernet cable where the cable enters the CAPXS. If you're connecting to a wired network for automatic configuration, or DHCP, first plug in the Ethernet cable. Choose Wired Network and tap Continue, then Connect. Connecting to the network may take a few moments. The network status will show Connected. Tap Continue to Admin Mode. If you want to manually connect to a wired network, first plug in the Ethernet cable, then choose Manual Network and tap Continue. Fill in the fields for IP address, Netmask, Gateway, Primary DNS, Secondary DNS, tap Connect. Connecting to the network may take a few moments. The network status will show Connected. Tap Continue to Admin Mode. If you're connecting using the Ethernet cable and the green LED is not lit, make sure the cable is firmly plugged in on both ends of the connection. Make sure that the router or switch is powered up. 
If the connection still isn't working, troubleshoot this with the assistance of the IT staff for the installation. Next, let's check the camera. Under the System menu, press the Audio Video button. You will be able to see the live feed from the camera. Next, disconnect all electrical power to the CAPXS and any powered accessories, such as door locks or gate operators. One CAPXS can control a single door with an auxiliary relay available if needed. Follow the directions for wiring the door as demonstrated earlier in the video. Connect the gate operator or door lock wires to the primary relay. Most applications use the normally open and common. Insert the wires from the gate operator by pressing down on the tabs. Release these tabs to secure the wires. Connect the other end of the cable to the door lock or gate operator control board according to the instructions for your application. Now, restore power. Under the system menu, select the outputs tab. Then select door one to test the relay. To exit admin mode, tap the exit button and confirm the selection. It's time to test the setup. Add your contact information and email. Once installer information is added to the facility, follow the remaining steps to test unit video calling. Answer the phone and confirm two-way audio. Testing, testing. Also, test credentials and entry codes. Once you've confirmed everything is working, don't forget to delete your test information from the facility. The installation is complete. Be sure to set aside time to help the community manager to get up and running. For more detailed information, including wiring diagrams, please refer to the CapXS installation manual or visit partner.liftmaster.com.